This is the Helicopter Flying Handbook, Chapter 14. This will be page 10 of 18, Assessing Risk. It is important for a pilot to learn how to assess risk before a pilot can begin to assess risk. He or she must first perceive the hazard and attendant risk. In aviation experience, training, and education help a pilot learn how to spot hazards quickly and accurately during flight training. The instructor should point out the hazards and attendant risks to help the student pilot learn to recognize them. Once a hazard is identified, determine the probability and severity of an accident. Level of risk associated with it becomes the next step. For example, the hazard of binding in the anti-torque pedals poses a risk only if the helicopter is flown. If the binding leads to a loss of directional control, control the risk of is high that it could cause catastrophic damage to the helicopter and the passengers. The pilot learns to identify hazards and how to deal with them when they are incorporated into the training program. Every flight has hazards and some level of risk associated with it. It is critical that pilots be able to differentiate in advance between low-risk flight and a high-risk flight. Establish a review process and develop, it, develop risk mitigation strategies to adjust flight throughout the range. Examine NTSB reports and other accident research can help a pilot assess risk more effectively. For example, the accident rate decreases by nearly 50% once a pilot obtains 100 hours and continues to decrease until the 1,000 hour level. The data suggests that for the first 500 hours, pilots fly, flying VFR rules, visual flight rules, at night should establish higher personal light limitations than are required by the regulations and, if applicable, apply instrument flying skills in this environment. Individuals training to become helicopter pilots should remember that the helicopter accident rate is 30% higher than the accident rate for fixed wing aircraft. While many factors contributed, contribute to this, student must recognize the small margin of error that exists for helicopter pilots in making critical decisions. In helicopters, certain emergency actions require immediate action by the pilot. In the event of an engine malfunction, failure to immediately lower the collective results in rotor decay and failed auto rotation. Fixed wing pilots may have slightly more time to react and establish a controlled descent. According to the General Aviation Joint Steering Committee, the leading cause of accidents in GA are CFIT, weather, runway incursions, pilot decision making, and loss of control. These causes are referred to as pilot error or human-related error accidents. CFIT, runway incursions, and loss of control type of accidents typically occur when the pilots make a series of bad judgments which lead to these events. For example, when the pilot has not adequately planned the flight and the pilot subsequently fails to maintain adequate situational awareness to avoid the terrain, a CFIT accident occurs. Page 11. While the reasons for the individual helicopter incidents vary, it could be argued that it is the helicopter's flight mode and operational complexity that directly contributes to each incident. By nature of its purpose, a helicopter usually flies closer to, to, terrain, to terrain than does a fixed-wing aircraft. Subsequently, minimum time exists to avoid CFIT, weather-related or loss of control types of incidents that require quick and accurate assessments. Fixed-wing aircraft normally fly at higher altitudes and are flown from prepared surface to prepared surface. Helicopters are often operated in smaller confined area type environments and require continuous pilot control. Helicopter pilots must be aware of what rotor wash can do when landing to a dusty area or prior to starting where loose debris may come in contact with the rotor blades. Often, the loss of control when the pilot exceeds design or established operating standards and the resulting situation exceeds pilot capability to handle it successfully. The FAA generally accepts these occurrences as resulting from poor judgment. Likewise, most, most weather-related accidents are not just a, not a result of the weather per se, but of failure of the pilot to avoid weather phenomenon for which the aircraft is not equipped or the pilot is not trained to handle. That is, the pilot decides to fly or to continue into conditions beyond pilot capability, commonly considered bad judgment. It cannot be emphasized enough that the helicopter's unique capabilities come with increased risk. Since most helicopter operations are conducted by a single pilot, the workload is increased exponentially. Low-level maneuvering flight, a catch-all category for 
different types of flying close to the terrain or obstacles such as power line, patrol, wildlife control, crop dusting, air taxiing, maneuvering for landing after an instrument approach is one of the largest single categories of fatal accidents. Fatal accidents that occur during approach often happen at night or in instrument flight rules, IFR conditions. Takeoff, initial climb accidents are frequently due to the pilot's lack of awareness of the effectiveness of density altitude on aircraft performance or other improper takeoff planning that results in loss of control during or shortly after takeoff. One of the most lethal types of GA flying is attempting VFR flight into instrument meteorological conditions, IMC. Accidents involving poor weather decisions making account for about 4% of the total accidents by but 14% of the fatal mishaps. While weather forecast information has been gradually improving, weather should remain a high priority for every pilot assessing risk. So we'll hold off right there. That's a page 11 of 18. That's a assessing risk. All right, so we'll hold off there. Uh, 1118, chapter 14.